Welcome back guys and here we are question 9. So what's happening here? So it tells us that we need to solve for the given range of angles. So this is very specific from 360 to 540 degrees and we'll get to this in a second of the following equation. So this trig equation can only be solved using trig uh, techniques. Okay. Give your answers to 1dp. Now one thing I want to know, every time you do these type of equations, always write down your identities that you think is relevant. Typically, there's two, yeah? You have the sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. And you also have the fact that tan x also equals sine x over cos x. So these are literally the two identities that it's recommended to learn by heart every time you walk into these kind of questions. Now, when you look at the equation itself, the only way we can solve this is to firstly recognize that this one kind of looks like a quadratic equation, except that you have a sine and a cos. Now, the only way to actually make this work is to realize that, hey, we can change sine squared x using the lovely sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. So when you make sine squared the subject, you can throw cos squared to the right hand side and make 1 minus cos squared and then bang. Smash, substitute this back into this expression like I did over here. So this becomes that. Open this up, you know, expand it up carefully so you get 12 minus 12 cos squared and so on and then throwing everything to the right hand side so again this is just for convenience because i like to make my my square terms positive and then you get a simple quadratic equation so instead of the usual x squared plus something x plus a constant you're going to use cos x squared cos x and a constant and by the way guys it looks the same okay this is literally a blatant quadratic equation now once you got this now we can solve it so to solve this one you could factorize it or use a quadratic formula I'm going to go ahead and use a quadratic formula because it's just easy, yeah? So you use a quadratic formula, which is minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a, where a is 12 from here, and then b is minus 7, c is plus 1. Plug it in, and then using the plus and minus function in your calculator, or just plus and then second minus, you should get two solutions, a third and a quarter. Now, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, yeah? not radians because we want it in um we want the actual degree angles so when you do that when you cos inverse a third you should get 70.5 degrees and if you cos inverse a quarter you should get 75.5 your calculator might say arc cos or cos to the power negative one they're both the same thing yeah so your calculator should be either written like this or it could be written like this okay both of these are the same it's just um definition it's just a uh, uh, it's just different regions, different different calculator regions have a um, different way of no, no, uh, writing it down. Just different notation. Anyway, here comes the main bit. So now I didn't actually solve this, so this is what we're going to do together. So now that you've got the solutions for x, for cos, we need to use something known as the cast diagram to plug to plot this in and find the correct angle for this range. So what I did is that because we worked with cos, we can draw the cost diagram, which is C A S T, always in this order, yeah. So from this angle, going like this, yeah. Now, because we're using cos, this means that we're going to use C, and because it's answer that we had a positive result, we're going to use A, because A always means all, and all means positive. And you can kind of guess C is for cos, T is for tan, and S is for sine. Okay, so we're not going to use these two, yep. So we just got these two roots. So this means the way this works is that we firstly draw two lines like this and label these angles x because this tells us that we have an angle width of x. Now, the way this works, always start off zero degrees here and now we just draw circles. We, st we always work um, anti-clockwise, yeah? So keep it, no, we always travel in this direction. So first things first, we start from here and we go to here and we say we traveled x degrees. And then we draw another line and we say we traveled almost a full circle but x degrees less. So we also traveled 360 minus x degrees. And then we can do another one and so forth and say we traveled all the way around until we hit the line and say we traveled a whole circle plus x degrees. So the way this works is that we can just do several loops until we keep hitting the lines over and over again. Now, you can just go this far because the reason why, because if we do a full circle, it's 360. And if we do, if we do one and a half, we know that this goes up to 540 degrees. So 180 or 540, yeah? So 180 if it's half a circle, 540 if it's a full circle and a half. So that's our limit. So it's literally the limit from here to here. Since we understand, and yeah, this is literally our answer, guys. 360 plus X. And that will give us our answer for the result between here. 
So 360 plus x, what's it going to give us? It's going to give us, if x is 70.5, 360 plus 70.5 will give us, I should actually know this mentally. Well, 430.5. So yeah, there's always two answers to give here. And if you replace 75.5 x, you can also get 435.5 degrees. And that's it guys. That's literally all you need to know about cast diagrams. Okay. If this was if this was understood, please let me know because sometimes it's a bit challenging to illustrate this. But the whole purpose is that every time you get angles, whether it's cos, you label C. If you get tan, you label T, and sine you label S, and that's what you work with. You always do A plus one of the trig functions. That's if the result is positive. If we had a negative result, then you don't use A, and then you don't and you wouldn't use the the function given. So if it was cos X equals negative a third. We don't use cos of a. In fact, we use s and t. But anyway, that's another day, yeah? Otherwise, let's move on to 10. If you guys are enjoying this, give me a like, yeah? I mean, that helps a lot. Anyway, let's move on. So, the equation kx squared plus 4kx plus 3 is 0, where k is a constant and has no real roots. Now, this is a discriminant question, okay? So this is involving the quadratic equation, but in particular, the square root function. It's basically telling you that when you have no real roots, this means your calculator will give you an undefined answer. That means if you get a negative inside the square root, you cannot get an answer. So that's what it means by no real roots. So in other words, b squared minus 4ac inside the square root must be negative or less than zero. So this is the equation we begin with. Now prove that we can get this equation, this answer, that k is between this. So all we do now is just replace the, um, the b squared minus 4ac with the letters from here. So b is obviously 4k, so we can say, therefore, we've got 4k squared minus 4ac. So 4 times a, which is k, times c, which is 3. And all of this is less than 0. Now, let's keep going. So expanding this one, we've got 4k squared, so that's 16k squared minus 4 times 3 times k is 12k. Okay. And um, I can, you can kind of figure out, you can see that we've almost, got the, we've almost got the answer. So factorizing k from here, so just solve this like you always do. So you've got 16k minus 12, less than 0. So this means our result is going to be either, well, the critical points are going to be k equals 0 or 16k equals 12, which is k equals 3 quarters. And that's it. And because it's less than, and the way it usually works, if you had the graph, so it said it's the quadratic graph, which is uh, something like this. Oh god, that's <laughs> that's awful. A, a typical U-shaped graph, yeah. Oh god, bear me, guys. It's literally going to be when the function is below zero. So when, and the only time it's below zero is this region here, and we can see that one of the critical points is three quarters because that's what we got, and the other one is zero. So the answer will be four, or four between zero and three quarters. And that's it. I think I think that's it. Let me see. Yep. Zero and three quarters. Done.